Hello. So I thought I would show you how in the past I did uh, quick masking for jewelry. It's kind of an automated system with very few uh, limited actions as you um, you mask your own stuff. And since you shoot your own stuff, it will give you an idea of how to shoot something so that you can see how in post-production, once you take it in Photoshop, it will um, go ahead and make it much more easier for you. So I downloaded this picture from the web. I just kind of needed it to show an example. In this case, um, this one has a dark color background, which is black in this case. Sometimes uh, some other images can be other dark color colors. And, you know, what we're looking for, like I said, there's two steps. When you do the photography step, you have to get a contrast so that your jewelry sticks out from the background. Um, I'm not sure how you can do that. You're the photographer in this case. You would deal with that on your end based on what you're shooting and your needs are. But for this one, we have a black background. So the gold stands out clearly. It has some red, you know, rocks on it. So that doesn't matter. This is also just to give you a rough idea. Because once you done are done taking the photo, you're going to have to create, like I said, a few act actions, maybe one or two. Uh, and you're going to have to do them according to what your needs are on your photo. Usually for silver and gold, it's quite easy, especially if they don't have rocks. Or if they do, especially silver, because you can just go ahead and I don't want to say desaturate the image, but you can convert it into black and white. And, you know, there's different ways of doing it in Photoshop. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but, okay, so I'm, I'm going to jump into this. So, the, you know, open your actions bar. And by the way, I'm using Photoshop CS5. It's an old version. It's the one I have that I own, you know, before this, they went, um, you know, on the cloud. And so the same stuff should apply to to there, to the newer versions. Because the last time I used the cloud one was 2019. And they had the same pretty much stuff that I use now just might be in different areas uh, so yeah open your actions thing go to window actions if it's not there yeah and then create a new one uh, I call this one masking and you know a new folder for it and then once I hit it create a new one new action for it it's gonna ask me what do I want to call it so I'll call it masking part one and because we will be eventually stopping it so the function key for this one I'm gonna set it to F12 and I hit record now this thing will just start recording my actions not how long it takes me to do something so once we have that here's the steps that you would have to do in order to um, to make this work for you to give you a really good idea and keep in mind this is done for a dark background so what we would first do is uh, do unlock this image it's gonna be called layer zero and see it'll record you the set background and it records the name by the way so don't if you rename something here it's gonna record the renaming the name and the new name and whenever you play your action if your your stuff isn't named accordingly then it would just not work because it has to match exactly the names so I wouldn't bother with naming anything while you're doing actions okay and so once you have this on duplicate the layer control J make a layer zero select it uh, not visible because you know in the you'll see why in a little bit because eventually we're gonna use merge visible 
Okay, so we select this layer back again. And then once we have this layer, we have to make this contrast so that our masking is a little bit more better, you know, stronger and easier to kind of tell the edges. If we zoom in on this, or I don't know if you can tell from this distance, but let me press Control Zero. You can see there's shadow there along this, so it may help. It might not help against us, but you see there's gaps in between the jewelry piece, so that also doesn't help having something that close. So that's why I think I mentioned in the score that if you gonna shoot something make sure it's not close so that you're not capturing uh, a shadow from there and um, it's gonna make it easier so once we have this layer layer zero copy you are not use an hue and saturation mask uh, adjustment slider sorry what we're gonna do here is gonna set this to uh, let's see saturation the blend mode on that layer and then we're gonna bump the saturation up keep in mind this will be generically speaking for all your images that use this action so you kinda wanna um, use it accordingly see right here this is not this is a low res picture so you see some pixelation at the edge but I'm going to go ahead and just tone it down to maybe 70. 70. Plus 70. So once we have that, we're going to go back to this adjustments. And we're going to go ahead and add a black and white. Uh, adjustment layer and because we want the colors to stand out from the back black background we're gonna slide everything to the right to make it white and you'll see how this um, starts to stick out clearly We still get a little bit of pixelation because that's the bad quality images. This should work way better with your pictures. You know, a better camera and all that. And then we're going to go back here. And we're going to create a levels adjustment layer. And this is where we're going to hit stop on the first action. Because we're not going to do anything on this one because this is where the human part of the interaction comes in. So the first part is just to get all of this done. So you hit uh, stop. And that's masking part one, which is F12. Then you will manually just, you know, this goes picture by picture. And uh, you can see there was a name up there. You know, I picked up the color, it doesn't matter. We'll give, that will be easily removed. So what we got what we're gonna do here, the manual part, is you're gonna go ahead and adjust this to your needs. And it shouldn't take you long. That's why I'm saying most of the part is automated. You're gonna, but you do need to have that human interaction just a little bit. And so what we're gonna do is raise our blacks, make it so that all these little edges around it get darker. You know, for the sake of this, I'm just going to push it all the way to the end of the black. Right there. And it's going to kind of give us like a strong edge. You can see a little bit of white here, but that shouldn't be a problem. Because once we have like enough to the point where we're happy on the dark point, we'll go to the mid-tones and just create them either dark or white. You know? bump them white or you can bump them dark depending on your needs once again uh, so in this case I'm gonna just set this back to one and then I'm gonna just push the blacks further in uh, yeah once we're over completely 
and then push mid tones a little bit into the darks to show more darks. Okay. And then this next part, see we pretty much this is pretty much going to be our mask. As you can kind of see. You can try and maybe bump the whites up. I mean you'll do this much more faster eventually, you know, once you do repetition. It, you know, it becomes faster for you. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Then we're going to create the part two. Once I'm okay with that. Remember, don't rename these. Because the actions have to be the same. So, uh, let's create a new one. It's called masking part two. And then I'm going to change it to F8. And kind of keep these separated. Um, hit record. And once we're there, we're going to go ahead and since the layer serial is not visible, we're going to go to layer and merge visible. which is fine and then we're gonna go select all edit copy once we copy everything we select deselect and then we're gonna go ahead hide this you can even program it to delete, you know, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to just hide it for this. Open this back up, layer zero. Put a mask on it. Enter the mask mode by pressing on the keyboard shortcut. It should be the backslash, not the forward slash. The backslash is below the backspace key and above the enter or return on the keyboard. But, you know, if you really want to enter the mask, press Alt and left click on it. But I'll just use the keyboard shortcut. And see, we're in it because our eye is now gray. And so we'll go to Edit. Paste special. Paste in place. Should be in there now. As you can tell, it's masked out. And then we deselect. By the way, I'm doing it up here because I, I'm afraid I might hit accidentally in key on the keyboard and it's going to record the action of switching the tool. And I, don't, I just want to avoid that. And then we're going to go back to our layer by clicking on it. We have removed it. We're going to add a white layer underneath. Well, empty layer actually. You know. And then, oh snap, I just realized, maybe, just maybe, because I press control to when I hit the new layer, it won't pick up control and put it under. It'll probably create it above. So, it was probably better to create new layer and then move it down so it records the action of moving it all the way down. Anyways, we're, we're going to continue and assume everything's working fine. Press shift and back, backspace. Fill it with white because you don't want to do the alt or whatever keys that are for your current colors. Because you might have used Photoshop earlier before and it's it has a different color. So when you run the action, it'll use the last color that's on there. So just go with shift backspace and use it on the contents. Use white. Fill it with white. Boom. It's there. Now you can hit and you can delete this layer if you want because it will recognize this as levels one. You can delete it. And you can even go as far as selecting the mask. Do a little Gaussian blur or go into the mask and do a little bit of feathering if you know your images, how they're going to come out and whatnot. 
you know, if you need to. In this case, for this example, they're a little bit rough, but that's fine because I wanted to make sure I got everything in here, you know. Then I'll go ahead and filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to use a fraction of 0 0.4. So hit OK. If I zoom in here, see the edges aren't that crisp anymore. If I wanted to, I can also record a fade and then just reduce it by like 50%. If you feel it's too blur or another percent, 75. I mean, leave 75% of it there, or 25 actually. Hit OK. You're there, and then you can end this. Stop. It ends. Now you have your two recorded actions. And this will work for, and with a white background. Now, because on this particular image, you know, I downloaded it off the web or whatever. It's not the best quality. Sometimes you will run into areas where, like right here, you have missing pieces. You can just go into the mask. Anything you feel like, you know, it needs it. Just paint it white, you know. There's no need to spend too much time on it. And especially if you know the image in the end is going to be used for a low res online picture or whatever don't have to put too much work into it you know some of these jewelry pieces like here you know it's red you know oh no this is actually white from the stone because it goes red white red white so see here it's black so I'm not even gonna bother with that you know maybe the pearl right here Probably the only thing I probably would keep in mind. So there's little minor tweaks. It's not perfect, but it took care of like 90% of your work. You know, this is black. I mean, mask it out with black. That's it. You need to mask out other things. I don't know, maybe this this and right here at 25 percent you can do that but these are like little things you can do after the action okay so now you have your product on a white background clean white background I mean you can go ahead and move it and it's still going to be in the white background. Uh, another trick is like if you shoot these uh, earrings, um, you don't have to shoot them both. You can just shoot one and in post production, copy, flip it over or something. If they're kind of uniform, so that no matter if you look at it on the left or right, it'll be there. Okay. And uh, let me explain why I use, because this is important. I feel this is important that many people just kind of overlook and feel that desaturating an image is the same as using a black and white one. It's not. It really is not. There's subtle differences and it matters as an editor whether or not your image is um, going to pick up certain colors or not. Let me invert that. So if you go to uh, the TG, let me pick the rainbow one. Where is it? here and then click OK send this opacity to 100 and I'm gonna put this wheel right here okay this is the spectrum of you know the, the colors the rainbow if I use desaturate so let me take this off if I use desaturate and I desaturate it okay what happens to the colors they're gone. Okay, they're completely gone. Okay. Now if I use go back here to my black and white. Look, I have 
my colors in black and white. Not only that, if I feel like, hey, you know, yellow should be whiter. And boom, it picks up yellow. But just the fact that by default, I have a spectrum in black and white, and I don't have it in hue and saturation when I just desaturate something, you're losing information. You're losing information that could be vital to your editing images, edited images, okay? So that's the only reason why in this, I would never go ahead and use desaturation. Never. I don't care what tool has the saturation slider. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to go with a black and white. You know, I trust the black and white much more be just because it can give me my colors. See, look at that. What color is this dark one? The blue. Look at that. Blue doesn't even show up here properly. You know, maybe they change it in the future formulas of Photoshop where desaturation actually does that. I'm in CS5, doesn't do it here. I'm not sure. I didn't get to test it on other ones. Okay, so now that's that's done with that. Okay, so if we go back to beginning, you know, we can test our our um our masking stuff. So the first step, you know, I could close these actions because it's gone. I can press F12. So let me look at my keyboard. Press F12. Let's see if this works. Boom. All that's done. I just do this. Bam. Press F8. Hopefully this works. Select is not currently available. Yeah, something something was up. Uh, like I said. See that layer, the new layer that was white? <sighs> it didn't it didn't do it so okay so let, let's try and record this all over again so let's go back to the start and get rid of this one masking part two delete I knew something was gonna be up with that one and then now uh, just go this to the front and we're gonna play that first part which works we know it works okay so now we did our thing right here and hit we're gonna record a new action so it's gonna be masking part two and we're gonna put F8 hit OK and we're gonna merge all visible layer Select merge visible. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and create a new layer up here. Merge. Select layer zero. Unhide it. Because you got to be very tech, very precise and very technical and precise when you do these recorded actions. Because one thing that you might do in a keyboard shortcut might not work. <laughs> you know, so you have to sometimes do this manually. So here we're going to create a new layer. So it's above it. Fill it with white. And we're going to send this layer to the back. Uh, I'm not sure. I know the keyboard shortcut. But how do you send it through here? Uh, let's see. Arrange send to back this is the one we want to use because that will drop it even if you were created on top or whatever reason you later go back to your first part and add new stuff go so send it there so now that that's there we go to levels oh no and unhide it I'm gonna do it this other way we're gonna select layer zero Add that mask, and we're gonna go ahead and apply it. So image, while our mask is selected, okay, it's selected right there. Apply, 
we're going to select levels one, the layer. Okay, we're not gonna select as multiply, just put it as normal. It's still gonna do the same, but leave it at normal. Hit OK. Boom. Then you can hit stop. Once it's done, you're back to the human element. Oh, we forgot to delete this one. Damn it. I mean, you can go ahead and record what was back here on this. So we hit record to continue the recording. Select layer one. I mean, levels one. Delete it. And we can hit stop. And then we're back to this thing where we can go here manually and do any, uh, put this 100. Anything we want. You know, go back here, tweak that again. Boom, boom, boom. We're done. All right, so hopefully now if we run it a second time, we know the first part works. So F12, move this over, the human aspect of it, and then, oh, sorry, F8 now. Bam, without a problem. Easy peasy, baby. You just spent a few seconds. I mean, and here, you know, you want to make sure you select the mask for whatever reason. Just hide that. Okay, easy peasy, baby. Easy peasy. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this will work on any other image you bring. I do have an example one of this image is bad. You know, the gold will come out, the blue will come out, whatever. But the problem with this one is that you don't have a contrast between the background and your product. Not only that, your product is actually close to the white. You see the shadows casting down there? This is going to be a problem. This is why I said on the Discord, and I said it earlier in the video, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to shoot your product, make sure it doesn't cast a shadow. So make sure there's nothing close to it. You know, for silver, even silver will will have color by default. See, it's not, you know, anything. It, it's, it's not just silver, silver. There's some blue in there, some reddish, whatever. You know, the, the best way when I was working with, the, with that jewelry company is I told them these were my needs these th this will make production flow faster and they listened to me I, I i was actually surprised they listened to me because most of them will just tell you just shut up the photographer doesn't want to deal with it you know just do your job you're paid to this and that photographer doesn't want one wants to do extra steps and like and, and you know i've had places that straight out were like that <laughs> they didn't care they didn't care about my feedback, but I told them it would speed up production for you, for them. Everyone gets their stuff faster and quicker. But they listened to me. Their photographer actually ended up shooting, um, like hanging earrings on invis invisible string. And the the background on the back, uh, I think we used black when we were shooting silver. But it was a, f a distance of like maybe... Uh, I don't know how far, no more than a foot, I think. I mean, you're the photographer in your shots. You tweak it out, figure out how far you need to go back so that uh, you have a, a background in the back. But, you know, it. Uh, as long as there's contrast between your product that you're shooting and the background, it will make this next step this whole process way easier for you to mask. You just go in there, drop them, boom, boom. Keep in mind, this is for a back black background, you know. Um, if it was white, you have to do, I think, invert on the masking part. When uh, when we did the part or uh, after we added the, um, the mask, the black and white mask, 
you'll add an invert adjustment just so that you can flip whatever's white to black and black to white which will give you this result you know which will give you this and then we'll go ahead and do you know at the continue on with the levels you know continue on with the level everything else will be fine it's just you're just adding that one extra step you know on black and uh, and black and white you can you know you can program stuff you can just put white everything here um, so that in case you manually ever need to whatever you use it you can just go here set them all white and then uh, save black and white preset boom bada beam bada boom you and then next time um so like here save them we'll save them to all white this all sliders all white and then you will do one two for like the opposite where you move, move them all black ah, damn it Uh, so you get the idea from here. Say preview all black, and I use all caps because it's easier to read. Just in general, that's one of the things I learned when working in a creative house. Use all caps. It makes reading file names and whatever it is easier for everyone. Okay, so. That's all I got to say, but I hope this gives you a clear idea on how to move your production line faster on how to do the, the masking process in an automated way where you're not spending time on what to do. You will have to, like I said, tweak your settings. This is just a very, very general idea. So for your needs, for your specifications, you'll you have to tweak it to your liking okay and then you'll see what the results are on you know save your actions uh, I think you can export your actions uh, I don't I'm, I don't remember you know it's been a while since I played with actions but look at that you can just move it doesn't matter you know, doesn't matter. And like I said, when you're shooting, keep in mind you you have to have a contrast for your background and whatever's in the background. Make sure it's not a bright ass color that will reflect or something similar. So like if you have gold, don't put an orange background. It's just gonna make it difficult for you. You know, and even if it's dark orange, you know, gold when it goes certain areas dark kind of goes into that dark orange spectrum you want to stay away from that you know and you have a light box so I don't know that's totally different you can work with a white background but it's gonna be maybe a little bit more challenging when you're shooting silver because white on silver is light on light so you'll have to you know tweak your settings on your actions well what one way we ended up solving that issue when I was working at the jewelry was we got a piece of black cardboard or not cardboard but a, a black construction paper you can buy I guess any store black construction paper and then just place it in the back of your backlight you'll have light but whatever your camera captures it's gonna capture a back black background and your product will still stand you know um yeah this mask don't worry about it like I said it's just to give you an idea. I hope this helps. Uh, and that's it for me. I'm going to stop this video.